The machine gunner class inside of Hell Let Loose is uncontested when it comes to the extreme amount of firepower and suppression ability that it can produce. The weapons and equipment provided to the machine gunner role allow the user to make any infantry advance or offensive grind to a halt with the proper information and coverage. My name is Not Sense, and thank you for joining me on my guide that covers the machine gunner role inside of Hell Let Loose. Before I start discussing the details of this role, I want to provide a quick disclaimer by stating that I'm not trying to tell you how to play the game. This guide is designed to cover the machine gunner role in detail, as well as give some tips and tricks that I've personally learned from my experience my, inside uh, of the game. But, with this out of the way, let's get into the details of this role, starting with a brief overview of what the machine gunner role is, as well as its benefits inside of the battlefield. As I mentioned previously, the machine gunner role has a large amount of the team's firepower and loads of ammunition to go with it. The machine gunner is great for setting up in one position and defending a well-fortified point, slowing an enemy's advance or using a hail of bullets to keep the enemy's heads down while your team attempts to flank them. Which brings me to my next point. While the machine gunner absolutely has the ability to mow down wave upon wave of enemies and racking up kills, this isn't the only thing that having the massive amount of firepower is good for. Inside of Hell Let Loose, players have a suppression effect over them when they're being attacked with high volumes of gunfire or if gunfire comes too close to them. Once suppressed, the player's vision will become impaired by having this really noticeable blurry effect, as you can see here. This, in turn, will cause the enemies to seek cover in order to get away from the gunfire, which is required in order for their vision to return back to normal. The reason why I bring this up is because the machine gunner roll can take heavy advantage of this effect inside of combat. Even if you're not directly hitting the enemy with your bullets, as an example if they're behind cover, just knowing a general direction of where they are and firing bullets over their heads or close to them will give them this effect. When the enemies are suppressed, it makes it a lot easier for your team to advance on their position and win firefights. With this being said, I would like to stress the effectiveness of communication with your squad and other teammates while using this role. While the machine gunner role has no shortage of firepower, I should mention that one of the downsides of this class is the mobility aspect. The machine guns have a high rate of fire and lots of ammo, but they're also heavy and have a lot of recoil, which makes them inaccurate for hip firing and unable to be fired from the shoulder like a rifle. All machine guns come with a bipod that can be deployed on some surfaces to increase the accuracy and reduce the recoil from the weapon while firing. While the bipod helps substantially, this leaves the player at least partially exposed to enemy fire while mounted. The machine guns can be fired from the hip in emergency situations. However, this makes the weapon inaccurate and the player is unable to use the iron sights unless the weapon is on a bipod. This class does compensate a little bit, by providing the player with a pistol. However, I would still say that the lack of mobility would be the main downside of the machine gunner role, and that the machine gun doesn't work well in defending close quarter areas, such as bunkers, buildings, or trenches, unlike submachine guns or even rifles in some situations. With this being said, I would like to stress the importance of communicating with your squad while using this role. A big part of the machine gunner class is being able to consistently know the location of incoming enemies so you can engage them. Having effective communication with your squad mates and squad leader make the process of actively knowing locations to suppress enemies significantly easier. So now that we've covered an overview of the role and its benefits, let's talk about the actual weapons and equipment that the machine gunner class uses. I'm going to cover the weapons and equipment a little bit differently than some of my other class guide videos. Normally the leveled classes from the different factions are directly comparable across the board, but with this being said, the Machine Gunner's classes are different from faction to faction, so I'm going to be covering each of these classes by their respective faction instead of their rank. Starting off with the United States, this faction has two classes for Machine Gunner role. One is the Standard Issue, and one unlocked at level 3 is called Fire Support. The Standard Issue's primary weapon is the Browning model of 1919 machine gun, which has an ammo capacity of 250 rounds and a fire rate of roughly 600 rounds per minute. This class is provided with six belts of 250 rounds each, totaling 1500 rounds, which is the same amount of total ammo for every machine gun by every faction. The standard issue classes are also equipped with a pistol as a sidearm. In my experience, the pistol is most effective inside of buildings, trenches, or other areas where a higher mobility is preferable over sustainable firepower. Each of the pistols in this category come with six magazines of ammo. 
The second loadout that the machine gunner role has in the United States is called Fire Support. This class is unlocked at level 3 and differs from the standard issue loadouts substantially in terms of weapons and purpose. Instead of a heavy machine gun, the Fire Support loadout is equipped with a BAR automatic rifle. This class is actually almost identical to the automatic rifleman role's standard infantry loadout, with the exception of the Fire Support class not having grenades. I was a bit perplexed at this class at first, but my observation is that the class is best used inside of situations where having more mobility is beneficial, such as being in a position where constantly moving from point to point is required, and the machine gunner isn't able to set up anywhere for extended periods of time or is consistently in close quarters combat. This class doesn't carry a pistol, however the mobility and being able to shoulder fire the bar makes up for not having a secondary weapon. Moving on to Germany, this faction also has two loadouts for their machine gunner role. However, they're a bit different from the United States. Unlike the second class having different types of weapons and serving a completely different purpose, Germany's second class is more of an upgraded version of the standard issue one. For Germany's standard issue class, they're equipped with the MG34 machine gun and Walter P38 pistol. While I wasn't able to find any confirmed data on the fire rate of the MG34 from the wiki or other sources, from my own testing, the MG34 fires at a rate of roughly 1100 to 1150 rounds a minute, and the MG34 also comes with 10 drums of 150 round belts of ammunition. The second loadout for Germany is called Veteran, and like I mentioned previously, Germany's second loadout is subjectively an upgraded version from the standard issue. This loadout is equipped with the MG42 machine gun, which has quite a bit more firepower in terms of actual lead down range compared to the M34 due to its higher fire rate. The MG42 has a fire rate of 1800 rounds per minute and has six drum magazines containing 250 rounds each. As comparing the two primary weapons for Germany, while it appears that the overwhelming opinion of the subreddit and discord favors the MG42, I have to honestly say that they both have their pros and cons. While the MG42 both has a larger fire rate and larger magazine, this also means that the weapon burns through ammo quicker and, according to the development blog, has substantially more recoil compared to the MG34. In my opinion, the recoil increase is noticeable, but not a contributing factor, considering that the weapons are mounted on bipods most of the time and aren't being free fired. While the MG34 is better at overall sustainable fire and longer bursts due to less recoil, I would have to agree with the general consensus and say that I might prefer using the MG42. Having such a large fire rate is really enjoyable when using it and it is great for suppression. Before I forget, I also need to mention that the pistol the veteran loadout carries is different. Instead of the Walter P38, the veteran loadout is equipped with the Luger P08. Personally, I haven't found much of a difference between these pistols and they work as intended, so I can't really compare which is better one way or the other. I feel that it's personal preference. With this being said, it's not something that I would worry about, because in my experience the pistols are rarely used and really only in emergency situations. Finally, discussing the Soviet Union, this faction has the one standard issue loadout for their machine gunner role, consisting of the DP-27 machine gun and the Nagant model of 1895 revolver. The DP-27 is fed by a 50 round pan magazine, and based on my testing, also fires at around 600 rounds per minute, similar to the Model 1919 Browning from the United States. While this weapon has a lower fire rate than the German machine guns, the low magazine size that reloading frequently is more common with this class. So now that we've discussed the role in detail as well as the weapons and equipment that's used, let's finally discuss some of the tips and tricks that I've picked up over the course of playing Machine Gunner that may be useful to know. My first tip is that positioning is key for wherever you plan the setup as a machine gunner. Keep in mind that the machine gun is most effective inside of a static position. So picking places that have great elevation and cover are ideal for long-term sustainable fire. Every position has its advantages and disadvantages, and it's just a matter of experience combined with situational awareness to pick the best position at that current moment. As an example, being on the top floor of a building has higher elevation, which means that the enemies are easier to see. However, it doesn't have great cover, and it's easily spotted by enemy infantry. My second tip is to favor suppression over instant kills. Keep in mind that machine gunners have most of the squad's suppressive firepower as well as tons of ammo. 
What this means is that shooting the kill only when you see an enemy isn't ideal. Just knowing the direction the enemy is advancing from, or the general area of their position, is enough information to lay down suppressive fire for your team to be able to advance on them. I'm not saying that providing suppressive fire doesn't kill anybody. In fact, quite the opposite. A high amount of firepower aimed at an advancing enemy force is almost guaranteed to land kills. I'm just saying that it's a waste of potential to only fire at enemies that you see running across a field, for example. My third tip plays into my second one quite nicely. Don't be afraid to use your ammo. Like I mentioned previously, the machine gunner has a total of 1500 rounds in their primary weapon before needing to resupply. I'm not suggesting spraying endlessly into an open field, just hoping that there are enemies there. However, keep in mind that engaging an enemy position or attempting to slow in advance is by no means a waste of ammo. That amount of suppressive firepower keeps the enemy's heads down and helps your team substantially. To put it bluntly, there's a reason why the machine gunner roll has plenty of ammo. Don't hesitate to engage positions where you know enemies are advancing from, even if you don't see them right away. My fourth tip is a simple one. Machine gun fire is more controllable in bursts as compared to not letting go of the trigger. While the machine guns have bipods that help with recoil control, constant fire will still knock your aim off. As an example, if you pull the trigger without letting go of any of the machine guns and don't try to compensate for recoil, the gun will shoot into the sky every single time. I personally try to limit myself to bursts of 5 or 6 rounds, but it really isn't an exact science as long as the bullets are flying where I want them to. My fifth tip is to watch for smoke grenades. If enemies know the general direction of a machine gunner's position, they will almost always attempt to throw smoke grenades in your general direction in order to obscure your vision. While these smoke grenades are effective at covering enemy movement, I often find that spraying a few rounds into and around the smoke cloud will net a few kills, since the smoke is almost always covering enemy movement. My final tip is arguably my most important one. Keep in a constant line of communication with your squad and your team on enemy movement is going to be your greatest resource for finding enemy players. I usually play this game by myself, but I've recently been teaming up with a few people from a group and in my experience inside of the game in terms of communication and actively guys. knowing the position of enemies have changed drastically. Like I mentioned previously, there are multiple instances inside of the game where my squad members or squad leader will point out enemy positions that they see and will ask me to engage them. This has been a considerate help, especially compared to trying to find enemies myself. Even if you don't have a squad to communicate with, asking in yes. local chat where other teammates see enemy movement can be a huge help to you. And that's all I have for you guys. Thank you for stopping by and watching the video, as well as for your continued support. I'll link the playlist for my Hell at Loose guides in the description of the video in case you would like to see more of them. Also, if you enjoyed the video and would like to see me make more of these guides, I ask that you leave a like on this video. Not only does this help with YouTube's video analytics and allows the video to reach more people, but it also shows me that people are enjoying what I do. If you have any feedback, further questions, or just would like to talk about the machine gunner role in more detail, please feel free to leave a comment. Not a lot of people seem to know this about YouTube, but content creators will receive notifications for new comments on any video, so it doesn't matter how old a video has to be in order to receive notifications. But thank you again for watching, and I hope you enjoy your time inside of Hell Let Loose.